Hello there everybody, XP Walker here to teach you some absolute basics about artillery. Now today we're not going to be talking about the uh, the advanced stuff like uh, measurements and angles and degrees, things like that. Uh, we're just going to be talking about how to sight in an artillery unit with absolutely no foreknowledge. The ability to, to basically fire at anything without knowing really anything about artillery at all. So we're going to just go through all the basic motions here and see if I can help you guys learn how to fire artillery properly. There are, of course, are more advanced tutorials out there for exact angles, um, exact distance, exact degrees, things like that. We're not going to work on that today. We're just going to do artillery for dummies for all of you people who just want to be able to sight down an artillery and fire it in the game with minimum knowledge required. We're going to sponge the barrel, which uh, if you're completely new to artillery, you just stand on the right side of the artillery piece, you turn your body counterclockwise, and sponge barrel will pop up. Then you hit F, and it will sponge the barrel. The barrel is now clean. It is time to put ammo in the barrel. So we're going to run over to our caisson. At the moment, we're using a 3-inch ordnance, which is a smaller but very reliable cannon historically speaking. We're going to grab shell. There are three types of ammo. There are shell. Shell is more or less like a grenade. You want to you want it to hit the enemy either just behind them or on the ground in front of them. Case is more of an airburst ammo. And then last but not least is canister, which is really just a shotgun in a cannon. We're going to put a shell in. We stand on the left side of the cannon and we move our body clockwise until insert round pops up. There it is. Next up, we're going to go back to the right side, move our body counterclockwise until ram round comes up. Normally, you have a cannon crew helping you. You shouldn't have to do this solo, but for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm showing you it solo. And also, it's kind of early in the morning. Nobody else is on, so <laughs> it's just me. Okay, so we're going to push the wheel forward. We can hold down shift to go faster. doesn't really do much, though, when you're solo. And next up, we're going to sight the cannon, where it says turn elevation screw. You're going to hit F. You're going to look down the side of the cannon. Now, if I move my mouse up, I'm looking from above the cannon. If I move it down, I'm looking from below. So what I want to do is I want to move it up until I can see the sight. So you can probably barely see that sight right now on your screen. And I'm noticing that the sight is to the left of the target. So if I fire, my cannonball is probably going to go past the target just on the left. Instead, I'm going to grab the trail spike, which is right back here. It's a little hard to grab. It's a really small area. See, it just goes away. I'm going to hit F. And when you turn your cannon left and right, you use the opposite key. So if I want to turn it right, I hit my left key, which is A. If I want to turn it left, I hit my right key, which is D. So I want to turn it right just a hair, so I'm going to literally just tap the A. You probably didn't see that, but it did move. I'm going to get back on the screw. And it looks like the sight is pretty close to center. We're going to, we're going to accept that as OK. From here, I know that this target's about 230 yards away, roughly. So there isn't too much arc to my shot, which means I can eyeball it. Now, if it was... The further set of targets, I would want to bring this sight above the target a bit. But in this case, we're pretty good. So we're going to elevate to, let's say, let's say 2.57 degrees. The way I'm figuring that out is I'm just looking at the sight and I'm seeing just a hair of the sight left looking at the target. Now, if I'm doing this right, it should hit fairly close to the target. Again, you want to make sure your sight is barely visible over the top of the cannon. So if I'm looking like this, that's wrong. If I'm looking like this, where I can't see it at all, that is wrong. I want to bring up my, my camera until I can see just a hair of the sight. And then I want to adjust using the W and the S key. S goes down, W goes up, as you can see. Next up is our fuse timer. If you look on the bottom right of my screen, you can see it says range 1,181 yards. So the round won't actually explode for over a thousand yards. If I want the round to explode right on their face and not just knock a guy out with a single cannonball, I'm going to hit my page down key. So page down, if you have a normal computer and a keyboard, is just above the arrow key. 
If you have a laptop, you may not have a page down key, in which case you will need to uh, you'll need to go into your key bindings and bind your fuse timer keys. So I'm going to go page down and you'll notice that the yards are decreasing as is the fuse timer. This is basically a, a Think of it like an old timey fuse in like cartoons where they would light it and then it would burn for a second and then the bomb would explode. So we want to lower this fuse timer until the range is about 230 yards. So I'm going to hold left shift while I do this and it will go much faster. There we go. About 230 more or less. It's uh, it overestimates a bit so I could go down to about 200 and still probably hit the target but we're being safe. Okay so we've totally sighted this in. This is just eyeballing it. It is not um, exact science. It's not exact guessing of length or distance. So let's see if our sighted shot gets anywhere near the target without any actual calculation. Firing. Yeah, top of the, top of the target, a little bit high. I could have probably brought it down a little bit, but you can see right there that puff of smoke near the target. And it looks like my round was pretty accurate. Okay, so let's talk about farther targets. Farther targets are a little bit harder. The farther you go, the more you need to arc your shot, especially depending on the type of shot you use. For instance, if you use canister fire, you're going to need to arc it extreme because those little mini balls or those little uh, just round balls, they don't travel very far, very straight. So you'll need to arc it quite high, but we're going to stick with shell today. Okay. So again, I'm on the screw. I'm going to look down the sight. I'm going to raise the sight until I can barely see it. Looks like I'm just to the left of the center target. So let's go ahead and adjust. Pick up our trail spike. Adjust right. Just a tiny hair. Ideally, you want a team so that you've got one guy on the screw who can tell you exactly where to adjust and another guy on the trail spike and another guy grabbing ammo. Okay, so that looks pretty centered, as you can tell. Now, I know this shot is a much farther shot. It's about 350 yards. So if I'm looking directly at the target down the sight, I'm probably going to hit too low. So I want to raise this up just a little bit. Okay, that's, that's possibly good enough. 2.46 might be a little low. We're going to find out. One other thing to note that I haven't mentioned yet is you should keep track of what your current uh what your current degrees are before you fire because once you fire you'll want to adjust those degrees to make it a better shot on the second one your first shot think of it as is a tracer round of sorts you're, you're just finding out how close you are on your first guess and then you're going to use that number and you're going to make it a better shot the second time around again this is eyeballing this isn't specific calculations here Oh, what a shot! Wow! <laughs> that would have definitely killed him. Now, you could kind of tell if you look over there, the poof of smoke is behind the target. So even though the target is about the right distance on the fuse timer, the 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 round didn't actually go off for another 20 yards. Uh, the reason for that is unknown to me. It's just It just seems like if the, if the target is 250 yards away or 350 yards away, let's say, you want to set the timer for 330. You want to take off 20 yards. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to get accurate shell fire on enemy infantry. Uh, I don't know why that is, but I'm sure there's a reason behind it. Or maybe the developers just miscalculated the distance. I don't know. So next up, I'm going to show you guys a real quick clip of what an artillery crew actually looks like. Loading the cannon, moving the cannon, all that stuff. This was recorded yesterday, so... Uh, pretty recent footage here. As you can see, you've got two men on the wheel. You've got one person on the trail spike. That allows you to roll the artillery up at maximum speed. By the way, the officer can do any of these jobs except for actually cleaning out the cannon because he does not have, we call it the Q-tip, but he does not have a swab. So uh, he does everything else. Now you can see they are now cleaning the cannon out. The next person is already sighting the cannon before the round is even in. That is uh, a good way to save a little bit of time. And the officer is preparing to watch the shot as it goes down the range. Here comes one of the guys with, uh, looks like a shell round. No, excuse me, that is a case round. Loading a case round from the left side of the cannon while the other guy plunges it from the right side of the cannon. 
And if you've got a crew of three, you can actually have someone sighting it during this whole process right here. After a few final adjustments, the team is ready to fire the cannon. The last bit of adjustments are done and the primer is grabbed. And if they sighted it right, it should hit somewhere on the target. As you can see, it did hit somewhere on the target in this case. So that is your absolute basic artillery tutorial, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps you out. And hopefully we'll make a more advanced one a little bit later. Thank you so much for watching.